Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Come on Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Are you glad you're here? Amen. You look so wonderful from where I'm standing. It's so good to see you here in the name of Jesus Christ. This is Shiloh at one to the glory of God. We bless the name of Jesus for his goodness and his kindness. Last year, a time like now, on the 7th of August, we had our very first youth service to the glory of God. Come on, put your hands together. Celebrate Jesus. I know you can do better than that. Come on, celebrate Jesus. And every Sunday after that, the Lord has allowed us to gather together as youth in DCIKZ right here at Shiloh to just celebrate the goodness of the Lord. I don't know about you, but for me, I say this is the doing of the Lord, and it is marvelous in our eyes. We want to appreciate and acknowledge especially all those people that are not youth in the body, but are youth at heart. Our parents and uh, in every form, our big brothers and big sisters who always come to the youth service. Let's appreciate them. We celebrate all of them, Pastor Richard, Pastor Beatrice, and all of you that are seated in the back, all the parents that come to this place. For one reason or the other, we bless the Lord for you. Thank you for making the fellowship warmer. Allow me also in this first year celebration of the youth service to acknowledge all the youth leaders. I want to ask all the youth leaders to please be up on their feet right now in the name of Jesus. If you serve in the youth committee in Axis Ablaze, young professionals, please be upstanding. And I want the rest of the church to put their hands together, celebrate Jesus for these amazing ladies and gentlemen. Come on, celebrate, celebrate, celebrate. Amen, amen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. The Lord bless you, replenish you, and remind you daily that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. I want to say it from the depth of my heart. I cannot do youth ministry here without your help. The Lord bless you and remember you in Jesus' name. You're the object of many of my prayers. And the Lord remember you in Jesus' name. Whew. Your reward is great in the kingdom in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Let's just follow the leading of the Spirit. If you just stretch your hands towards this side where all of them are seated, just speak a word of life over them in the name of Jesus Christ. Pray that the Lord would preserve them, that the Lord will encourage them, that the Lord will enable them every day, that the Lord will make their sure footing, their footing sure in the name of Jesus Christ. According to his word in Psalm 26 verse 12, we decree and declare that the Lord will cause your feet to stand on level ground in the name of Jesus. That your standing and your footing shall be secure in Jesus' name. You shall not fall. You shall not sleep. You shall be anchored by the Lord Almighty all the days of your life. You shall come to your end at a ripe old age to the glory of God the Father. It shall be well with you. You shall take out of your stock and find nothing missing. In the name of Jesus Christ, we decree and declare it is well with you, and so shall it be in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. What a wonderful time it is to be in the presence of the Lord. If you're a visitor in this place, Karibu Sana, we are honored to have you. We're going to be doing it a bit more officially at the end of our service. My name is Brian Moshigadi, if you're meeting for the first time. I'm born again, and Jesus Christ is Lord over my life. It is the honor of my life, the true honor of my life to serve God here and the Bishop Dr. Jamie and Pastor Alice Kimani, who are away today on assignment, but we bless the Lord for their res respond or their response to the call of God in their lives that allows us to gather in this place today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Bona sifiwe. Amen. Today we want to look at the believer's practice. The Believer's Practice, it's a series we've been looking at for many, many years, for a long time. Now, this is a title or a theme that every time I do my own personal study, when I read the Bible and I find there are places where the Bible is calling me to do some things, it's calling me instructionally, or is instructing me to live a certain way. I like to call it the Believer's Practice. So, this is the Believer's Practice, and today we are looking at stewardship. Stewardship. Just as we continue right on there, allow me to also say thank you to all of you for making Shiloh at one a success last Sunday. 
Y'all were looking glorious. Thank you for bringing your Sunday best out, breaking out those clothes that you don't wear all the time and just coming and showing out. Thank you for giving in the blocks, in the groups that you belong in. Thank you so, so much. The Lord replenish you in Jesus' name. If you wrote a big pledge and you're still waiting for the Lord to give you money so that you can redeem and honor your pledge, may the Lord come through for you in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord bless you. Luke chapter 16 is where we are at. We have a couple of verses to read. I'm going to read really fast. We have 13 verses to read. I'm reading in the New King James Version, and the Bible says, He also said to his disciples, There was a certain rich man who had a steward, and an accusation was brought to him that this man was wasting his goods. So he called him and said to him, What is this that I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be a steward. Verse 3, Then the steward said within himself, What shall I do? For the master is taking the stewardship away from me. I cannot dig, and I am ashamed to beg. Verse 4, I have resolved what to do. Then, that when I am out of the place of stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. Verse 5, so he called every one of his master's debtors to him, and said to him, how much do you owe my master? Six, and he said, a hundred measures of oil. Thank you to the sound people. I'm going to solve that thing that's sounding in the drums. All right, thank you very much. So he says, uh, so he called every one of his master's debtors to him and said to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, verse six, a hundred measures of oil. So he said, here, take your bill, sit down quickly and write 50 instead of a hundred. Then he said to another, how much do you owe? And so he said, a hundred measures of wheat. And he said to him, take your bill and write 80 instead of a hundred. And it continues to say in verse 8, so the master commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly or wisely. For the sons of this world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by the unrighteous mammon, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Ten, he who is faithful in what is least is also faithful in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in much. Therefore, if you have not, if you have not been faithful in the, unrighteous in the unrighteous mammon, who will commit to you to trust the true riches? No, who will commit to your trust, sorry, the true riches? Verse 12, and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? Verse 13 and final says, no man, no servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and Mammon. That's the word of the Lord today. We'll go just a quickly into... A little bit of the background now. Jesus is teaching and speaking to the, uh, the crowds, okay, on his way to Jerusalem. Though where this, this portion of scripture is a bit unusual, uh, where it's positioned is a bit unusual, because we come from Luke chapter 15. Um, Jesus has been teaching about many things. In Luke chapter 14, he's teaching about the kingdom. He teaches about the parable of the, of the um, uh, Great Supper. And um, other people start to uh, follow him. The crowd continues to build and to grow and so on and so forth. And the people continue to follow Jesus towards Jerusalem and they get to chapter 15. He is accused by the disciples and the accusation sounds like this. This man receives sinners and eats with them in Luke chapter 15 verse 2. This man receives sinners and eats with them. And Jesus in his response to that he receives sinners and eats with them goes on a rampage so to speak and gives them a couple of parables. That is where we find the parable of the lost sheep. We find the parable of the lost um, coin, we find the parable of the lost son or the prodigal son as we know it. So Jesus is teaching many things. He's teaching about the kingdom. He's teaching about what he came to do, to seek and to save the lost. So when we come into chapter 16, he's speaking to his disciples as if, not as if it were different. It looks like it was. it is a different setting, but he really is as if he's in a crowd and you will see that a lot if you go back to Luke 14 and Luke 15. You'll find that he's speaking to this big crowd, but it's as if he's turning his attention to the Pharisees, then he turns his attention to the disciples, but as he's doing it, he's speaking in the audience of all people. To Kopamoja, say my amen. All right, so he continues, he's speaking to them, he speaks now, he's addressing the disciples. And he says to the disciples, in the hearing of many other people, he says to the disciples, this story that we've just read, it is called the parable of the unjust steward. Now Jesus is using examples as he's wont to do. He makes many examples and he makes references. Most of the time when Jesus is teaching, he uses examples of real life. 
Okay? He's telling the people this is what happens. He's telling people there's a man that had a son. He's telling people there's a man that had coins. He's telling people there's a man that had what else was lost, that had sheep. Right? He's using common, commonplace language. He's not telling them about deep mysteries that they cannot understand. He's using, he's using simple things to explain difficult, complex things, but he's doing it in such a simple way. And that makes the master relatable. So he's speaking to them about the parable of the unjust steward. Now, this is an interesting parable. Let me try and in, uh, explain it just a little. And why it's interesting is because the protagonists, among the people who are involved in the parable, are not great people. They are not good people. Most of the times when Jesus is giving these stories, there is a good man. And you can see the good man and the evil man. And he's saying, emulate the good man. Or he's giving stories and he's saying there used to be like the parable of a good Samaritan, for instance. He's, there's, there's good men and then there's bad men and easily you can pick out the good man. But in this story, all the people are bad people. There's the unjust steward and then there's the people who he owes money to. Or the people who owe the master money. Even these people are not good people. Juana Kubali Queen is a box. Anyway, the story goes a little bit like this, yeah. So um, there's an unjust, there's a there's a rich man who has a steward. Yeah. A steward who is, is somebody who is, has been put in charge of carrying out the affairs or taking care of the affairs of another person. Okay. A steward. An accusation is brought to the rich man or to the master that this man is wasting his goods. And so he calls him and says to him, I have heard some things about you. I need you to give a full account because you can no longer keep being the steward. Nikama, you're being kicked out. So you've been given a chance to put your record straight. And then we are going to kick you out after that. So the man knows Kamenu. I nijibuni bana. Anajua Kamenu kasawa sawa. Anajua sasa kutoka hapa, I am out of a job. This man is interesting. He's a lot like you and me. Most of us, you know, okay, most of... Are we millen senior millennials? Eh, hey, a lot like us millennials and some of you Gen Zs in the house, okay. So he's like um, similar because he says, Sandadu, Ntadu. And he's like, ah. Uno just the lima. A steward is a manager, okay. A white-collar job. He was used to doing that kind of thing. He was used to manage and to look after. Then now he's being told, now you can no longer do that. So unenda. Alafu unajua pia sasa uta kuwa na recommendation letter. Um, Nyi mnajua mambo ya kutafta kazi bila recommendation letter. Unakumbuka vinyo uliacha ile job, vinyo uliacha, uka vunja vitu, uka sema, I'm gone. Wanakuleza, why are you leaving? Please stay. Unasema, I am done with toxic people. Ujue huko wa uta wa ipata recommendation letter. Enda utafta kazi kuingine bila recommendation letter. Inakuanga hard. Inabidi sao mekuja church kuanza kutuambia, eh, pasi niandike recommendation letter. You know me, I can just write about your conduct in church. I cannot write about your profession, your professional conduct. Now, wow, when you're not quite a case, you're talking to Jovin, you're not a Gianga flow, Kuka Kanisa before to Akuja. Never you're not a Gianga, Kina, Lemba, Kuba, busy speakers, and Zito Masabs, Kuzi, Rudicho Kondani. No, they want to know how can you best apply your learned knowledge in school into their work environment. So, anyway, this guy realized Sita Pata recommendation letter. So, what I'm going to do, Nita Jipa? Nita Jipanga. So, he's like, I'm going to call a couple of people. First of all, and I say, Masiezi Nikalima, Namanze, I am too, I'm too proud to beg. Sisi enda kuanza kuambia. Watu walikuwa anajua mimi ndio mimi ndio mkubwa huku. Mimi ndio kusema. Alafu sasa all of a sudden mwanza kuambia say em eh, unaweza niokolea na kafinja hivi ni kitu hivi mantu antu kuna ka deal na ngoja kaivane nitaku ndakusot he can no longer he realizes the only thing I can do is to panga myself. I'm going to sort myself out. And so his plan was he's going to call all the people that owed his master something and he's going to cut a deal with them. In actual um, fact, he says in verse 4, I have resolved what I'm going to do, that when I am put out of stewardship, they may receive me into their houses. So the deal is a little bit like this. I'm going to cut for you what it is that you owe and then in its place, when you get your job, you can host. So you can host mwezi tatu. Wota ni host miezi. Wewe nimekatia nyingi wota ni host mwaka. Sema ai hapana siwezi nikasema ai basi utalipa deni yote. Hapana sawa basi. Sawa nitaku host basi. You know, he's Muna get sasa malio story natoka. And that's exactly what he does. He goes and he calls them. He's asking them, what did you owe my master? He says I owed him 100 measures of oil. He says quickly sit down, take your bill, write 50. Amekatiwa nusu bwana. <laughs> like wow, nusu, mimi nitaku host nusu mwaka. Ko like wonderful, great, great. Anachukua mwingine anambia, what did you? He says a hundred measures of wheat. He says aha, sit down, write 80. Sema okay, wewe basi umenikatia kidogo je nikatia kama ule. And sema sema wewe wheat na oil is not the same. Ebu nini? Wewe kwanza unani host mwaka, nimekukatia. Sema sawa basi nitafanya hivyo. 
When the master hears about this story, the Bible says, the master commended the unjust steward because he dealt shrewdly. That's an interesting thing. He commended, he was, he was not commended, he was not commending his conduct of his unjust stewardship, but he commended that he was smart. He was quick-witted. He thought quickly. Aliangalia masakam sanses akajipanga. And that's a very interesting parable. In fact, this is one of, very, of the very many, very few complicated or complicatedly interesting parables of Jesus. Because you try to think, ha, huh. this guy was commended exactly because of what I thought the Bible was the good book. Why is it, ha? Huh. Are you guys thinking that, like me? So anyway, he continues. Now, these are the words of Jesus. This parable, the whole of it is, a, is the words of Jesus. And he says to, the, um, he says to, to him, he commended the unjust steward because he had dealt shrewdly. For the sons of this world, in the words of Jesus, are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And you and I both know that that statement from Jesus is true. When you go out, just looking around, even without going out, these days you can go out without going out on your phone. Yeah? So you sit down on your phone, you're scrolling. Unaona tu watu waliamka, woki amka 8, kuna watu walikuwa meamka 5, inaitua 5 a.m. book club. Sindio? Waliamka, uh, uh, eh, si kweli, amujuan givo. Watu wanamka mapema, walianza the grind. Do you see post of people on Mondays? Ukingia TV Instagram. Oh, nye mwingia. Okay, sawa, bacha ni wambia. Mina ingianga Instagram, sawa. On Mondays, you wake up and you just see people, the grind, just the grind. Everybody's just working. We have to get it this week, new week. You're wondering, where are, were people injected with this energy and power to just take the week by storm? Just like, guys, just turn it down a little bit. And that is a lot of what Jesus is talking about. He's saying that the sons of this world are more shrewd in this generation or in their generation than the sons of light. Actually says in their generation to mean not only in the day of Jesus. That's why he doesn't say in this generation. says in their generation. Every generation where we have sons of the world, they are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light. And this in itself is an error. It could be a thing to commend because of the shrewdness and the um, ile kujituma, wacha tumi iluga, ile kujituma enye watu wa dunia ujituma nayo, wase wa kingdom tunaikosa. Bwana isu asifiwe. And this is not what, this is not how it should be. We have an upper hand over the world. In every way, God has given to us an upper hand. We have the spirit of truth. We have the spirit of God on the inside of us. What then is impossible with God? Absolutely nothing. We have an advantage over the world every single time. But we must arise and do something with the advantage we've been given. We can no longer just sit down, church, and just say that, ah, mi yesu ame nikomboa, sasa niketichini tu nangojea parapanda ilie, niende nikamlaki buwana yesu juu mbinguni. Ah, ah, mahali umeko, umeko on assignment. Let me take you very back to the very first sermon that we shared in the youth service. And you remember we were looking at blessed is the man. Do you remember that? We were looking at blessed is the man. We said that as we are thinking about what God is calling us to be in standing not and sitting not and walking not in the way of the wicked, it is that wherever God has placed you, he has placed you to be outposts of his grace. That when people are looking at you, ladies and gentlemen, as believers, they expect to see something of light. So every time that we are not doing, using the God advantage that we've been given, we are failing. That's why the church can become an object of ridicule. That's why employers will sit down, and some of you are here, employers will sit down and they will think, Uyu ni mtu wakanisa? Mm-mm, watu wakanisa wanakuangalezi. Imagine how high, how far we have fallen. The Bible in the book of Revelation uses that language a lot. It says, consider the heights from which you have fallen. Every time you sit to think about it, beloved, it must su- sukuma you, chokora you on the inside. It must stir up some sort of holy anger on the inside for you to think, why is it that I am not moving the way those ones are moving, yet I have an advantage? Let me put it closer to you. You're driving on the road. 
The road is clean. The road is clear. You have a nice car. It has nice turbo engines. You have the resources. You have the fuel. You have everything. The car is properly serviced. You have every single thing that you need for that car to move as it's supposed to move. And then enter stage left. There is Moshi Gadi with his... Yes. So... <laughs> so... We uko hapo na gari lako, shangingi la kifahari kwa kweli. Alafu kunae ndugu yako hapo kando, ambaye gari lake ni gari tu. Migu minne tu ya kumfikisha point A hadi point B. Jamani hata ukimjezia tenki, hato fika mwomba sana kwa kweli. Lazima asimame bala balani. Kwa sasa, tu kwa mda tu watu wa mungu, kwa mda tu. Some of you missed this prophecy. Ah. <laughs> anyway, um, you have, so both of you on the road. You have an advantage because of the vehicle that you're using. You can move, you can gain time, you can get to where you're getting. With ease, in comfort, you can do so much more, so much faster, so much more efficiently and better. But the other person knows that they can get up early and get there before you, you get up. Most of us take the advantage as an excuse to lazy around and sit back. Most of us take the advantage as an excuse to just decide God is going to help me, I don't need to do anything. So many times we find believers saying, I am waiting on God when God is really waiting on you. Such that if the person with a small vehicle knows their limitations, they will get up early and they will try and catch anapiga safari mapema. Ndiyo hata atakuwa na masaa ya kupumzika, anaketi kwa sababu gari lake dogo litamchosha, akifika kule anafika. So unaeka, you factor in many bricks in the road. You factor in many of the two bricks, two stops, two pit stops. Tua kurefresh, tua kutumia bathroom, tua kufanya one, two, three things. You factor in those things. Because you, they realize the limitation they have in the vessel they are using for transport. The other person who has an advantage might think, ah, hapa safari nitaipiga tu hapa deka mbili. So ni lalalale tu kidogo, nitaamuka tu ile masanta amuka. Na mini kishika kwa barabara ni kufululiza kufululiza. You're not sitting to factor in that you're not the only person on the road. You might have an advantage but the road does not belong to you. So there's going to be traffic. You're not thinking about that. You're not thinking that it is possible that uh, unazo kakosa mafuta. So unajambia, uh, but nita, nita fuel tu. Ukifika pale unapata wana kuambia kuna fuel shortage. You're not thinking ahead. And that is what a lot of us are doing. When Jesus is saying that the sons of the world are more shrewd in their generation than the sons of light, it's just a lot of what he's talking about is that. A lot of what, the words of shrewdness, another word for shrewdness is astuteness is smartness, is brilliance, is people that are quick-witted, people that are applying themselves. And that is a character that in the day of Jesus, and you and I both know, that even in our day, that our people, that the, the people of the world have over us. Even though we have the upper hand, we have the winning advantage over the sons of the world, it looks like every time the world beats us hands down, and that should not be right. So where could it be that we are missing it? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Jamani Bwana Yesu asifiwe. All right, so the parable continues. We're going to pick it up. And it says, And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by unrighteous mammon, Jesus continues, that when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. And verse 10 that's another line of thought. He says, he who is faithful in what is least is faithful also in much. And he who is, um, where is that? He who is unjust in what is least is also unjust in, come on. I want you to think about those words that we are reading. Now, when Jesus is saying, make friends out of, um, with unrighteous mammon, what does that word mean, the word mammon right there? Uh, in other versions, you read it, it says money. The word mammon is, from, is an Aramaic word, Aramaic word, that originally means um, that which in some, somebody puts their trust in. That which somebody puts their trust in. That's how it has continued to morph into what it means. Wealth, money, okay. Because most of the times people put their trust in wealth, in their money, in their means. So used interchangeably with the word 
money. So you ask yourself, what is it that Jesus meant? Actually, the question is, what did Jesus mean when he spoke of making friends by worldly wealth or by this unrighteous mammon? Now, when Jesus is speaking and using these words, it is important for us to come to understand what exactly he's talking about, where exactly he was headed as he's speaking to the disciples. We can't just speak it as one line of the story. You have to look at all of it, which is why I went all the way back to try and explain. The parable of the unjust steward is told for the benefit of the disciples. I want you to notice that even though he was speaking to the crowds, he's, we are being told, he's, we are assuming he was speaking to the large crowds, but or in the presence of the large crowds, but he's speaking directly to the disciples. It says right there in verse 1, he also said to his disciples. Now he's speaking to these sons of light. He's speaking to his followers, the people that spent time with him. It looks as if Jesus Christ is trying to put something straight or to settle a matter that has not been very, very straight and he needs the believers, the followers, the disciples that are going to be left in the earth. He needs them to get this lesson. So he's addressing them. He's taking time to speak to them. Now, Jesus is contrasting the sons of the world, the unbelievers here, to the sons of light. And we have already said that it is sad that the unbelievers seem to be doing well. They seem to be wiser in the things of the world, even though we have an upper hand over them in every single way. Now, Jesus is, encouraged, is, is, is um, encouraging his disciples, therefore, and he's saying to them, not that you should gain wealth dishonestly, but taking it back to the example of this man that he's speaking about, you want to consider the shrewdness of this man was that aliketichini akangaliambele. Aliketichini akafikiria siku zile zilikuwa zinakuja. Akajiuliza, how then shall it be? Now that's a lesson that Jesus, in fact, the lesson that Jesus is pointing directly towards. That ladies and gentlemen, when he's saying that you need to make friends using your worldly wealth, you need to do something worthwhile. Because this man, what he did, without looking at the, without nitpicking at the very example that Jesus is using, or taking it literally to apply it in our lives, Jesus is saying that this man, what this man did was that he thought ahead, he sat down, he planned, he considered, siwezi lima, siwezi nikaomba, siwezi anza kukopa, I'll not do that. So what can I do with my position now before my position is stripped of me? So what I will do is I will cut deals or ties with these people so that I can have housing for a few more days to come. They will take care of me. So Jesus is giving the example. Let me not um, misquote. He says, again, Jesus is saying that make friends in verse 9, make friends for yourselves by this wealth or by unrighteous mammon in verse 9. That's what we are reading. That when you fail, they may receive you into an everlasting home. Again, Jesus twists it now. He's talking about this everlasting home. The everlasting home, by the words of Jesus, we know is not here. Buona sifiwe. So the attention now shifts or, or, or moves to become something else. Jesus now shines light on exactly what he's talking about. That with what you have been given, the lesson we are supposed to learn, if, by, if any, from the children of the world or from this unshrewd or unjust steward is that we should sit down and learn to think ahead. Turn to your neighbor, tell them, neighbor, you must think ahead. I want you to think about, we are, remember we are talking about the believer's practice and the practice itself today is stewardship. The question we ask ourselves or we must ask ourselves is, what are we doing with what we have right now? What am I doing with where I am? I want you to understand in words that we say many times in this place that God is methodical, strategic, and intentional. God does not just do things. We don't believe in happenstance. No, ladies and gentlemen, we know that where God has placed me, every chance is an opportunity that I have been given. Are you a student? In that school, out of all the schools in Kenya, it cannot just be that God has placed you there just so that you can just so me too. There has to be some people that God has placed in your path that you must link with or join together with that something good might come out of it. Now, there are some of you here who are in business and you've partnered with people right now who have been your friends for many years, but you didn't just look at the friendship and say, ah, in your rafiki too, in your rafiki too. One day, akilizenyu zilifunguka mkarealize. You have this, you have this, you have this. Let's bring this together. And on top of it, the icing on top of it is that we have friendship. The icing on top of it is that we are also all 
believers. Every time I talk about this kind of partnerships, I like to give an example of Signature Entertainment who are in the house today. Now, when you think about these people, these people have been friends. They've been with us here all along. Siwa mekwa marafiki. But yeah, we've grown up together in this place. We have Akina, we have Kimu, we have Gatere, we have Stefan, and we have a Sami boy. And these people have grown up together. What are and so on and so forth. All of them are multi-gifted, multi-talented. But on top of everything, one day they sit down and they think an idea drops inside of them and they think we can do something with what we have now, with where God has placed us now. And out of that, Signature Entertainment is born. Made for you, ladies and gentlemen. I want you to ask yourself, where you are, what are you doing with what you have? Are you thinking about eternity? Are you thinking about the future? Are you thinking about the days to come? You see, it's interesting when, we, when as believers we talk about the future because the future for us as believers is not... 2030. No, 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 no. The future for you and me, beloved, is not 2027. Is that the next election? The future for us is not 2070. Because guess what? You might not be here. You might not be here. I think a big mistake that we might make, and in that way we will now be acting like children of the world, is thinking that we are going to be making all the plans for a life that is coming. There's this parable that speaks about this man. He says that I am going to sit down. He, um, he was a rich man, and then he akapanda, akavuna, akavuna vizuri, akakua na so much produce that he didn't have a place to store it. So he asks himself, what shall I do with my crop? And then he says to himself, I know what I shall do. I shall tear down my small barns. I shall build big barns. I shall put all my crop inside there. Then I shall say to my soul, that portion of scripture has a lot of my, my, my. He says to my soul, that I sit back my soul, relax, don't think about a thing. You have made it good. You will eat and drink and have plenty. And that night, the Lord comes to him and says to him, you foolish, foolish man. You don't know that tonight your soul will be required of you. Beloved, when we are thinking about the future, we are not thinking about the days to come here in the earth. We are thinking about our future that is promised by Jesus. Remember, he's talking to the disciples, to the believers. There is a future. Please tell your neighbor there is a future. Because a big mistake that we might be making, beloved, is for you and I to think that the future is many, many years to come when I am old and gray. A lot of us, that is the reason why you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ and you're in the house. You come to Sunday. You come to church Sunday after Sunday. You sit here. You listen. People are you're impacted. You're blessed. And then you just go home. You've not given your life to Jesus. You've not made that solid consideration to allow him to be Lord over your life. Why? You're thinking a day is going to come when you're going to feel something. That day is going to come in the future. When you're going to be old. Sasa utasikia umetosheka na anasa za dunia. Shere bila sheria itakwe mekutosha. Utasimawa tu seme, ah, sasa leo nataka kuwakoka. That day might not come, beloved. Priscilla Shire says that the biggest mistake that we make is to think that because I am 30 right now that I will live until I am 60 so there are decisions I can make then. And I'm thinking I am too young. You might be there, you're 20, you're thinking you're too young. Beloved, the Bible says, for it is appointed for man to die once and after that judgment now that is good news and bad news the good news is to know this gig is going to be folded and after that there's going to be another home that's coming great glad news the bad news is this we don't know when the appointment is so you might be here and you're 20 and maybe your appointed date to die is 21 not to scare you but it's just the reality of life all right so when you're here and you're 20 and you're dying at 21 ladies and gentlemen you're very old you're near the end of your days Mzem kongwe kwa kweli. Unaisha wewe atauna. I'm saying this very lightly but also very heavily. Please take it as I should be. Because there might be somebody else. We might be looking at our parents. We're looking at our mom, Reverend Beatrice. And Reverend Beatrice is in her 50s. You know, I know she looks like she's 30. But she's in her 50s, you know. So wako in her 50s, unamangali unasema, Hey, Pastor Beatrice amezeka. Hey, yako na watoto wazea. Amezeka, akona grandchildren. Anaitu wa shushu. Hey, ni mzee, ni mzee. 
Lakini kama Bwana amemwekea ataishi hadi miaka mia moja kwa kweli. Ah, kwa kweli kidosho. Msichana mchanga kwa kweli mama yetu hapa. So you might be thinking, mimi nikiwa na miaka yangu 20 na mwangalia sasa hey, eh pasta bitch ni mzee. Hey, ni mzee. Anafaa kwa ki make plans for retirement. Hey, hata anafaa kwa kujitarishia kwenda kule. Unasikia tuko na last expense cover. Eh hey, pasta bitch zachukue last expense. Hey, kwa sababu hiyo chochote kinaweza kutokea. Ni kweli. Ujui appointment iko lini mdugu zangu? Yako inaweza kuja kesho. Yangu inaweza ikakuja kesho. So if I have been sitting down and not acting or thinking shrewdly, using the example of the children of the world and dealing shrewdly without thinking about my other days to come, my future, and we've said our future is not here, then I am an unjust steward. Because what I have is what I have now. Forget about what is coming. What I have is what I have here and now. The friends I have now, that is part of the um, stewardship or the, the wealth I've been given by God to steward over. The money I have now, that is part of the wealth that God has given to me. The education I have now. The school I am doing, the ministry I am doing now, here and now. Such that every single day, I cannot afford to live mindlessly. Buona sifiwe. Somebody gave an example and said, the people who just think about the future here, maisha hapa dunia, I'm going to save so much wealth. I'm going to become great. I'm going to, ten, to get 10 vehicles. Magari kumi. Unajuwezi ukazi endesha zote at the same time. But zipate, magari kumi ni poa. So, so una, unasema ni tazipata, ni tazipata. Somebody made the example and says, those people are like ostriches. They just have ostrich wings. They have big wings and they are strong. But they are only good for running around the earth. When it is time for you to take flight, the ostrich never flew anywhere. It never went anywhere. But those people who think in light or live in light of eternity are like eagles. They may not do a lot of treading in the earth, but when the time comes for them to take off, ooh, child, you're in for some flight time. So you ask yourself the question, what are you doing with what you have? Are you just strengthening your ostrich wings or are you building a span like an eagle? Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you must be a shrewd steward. Let's learn this. Our time is up. So Jesus continues and he's speaking to, to them. And then he says to them, he who is faithful with what is least is also faithful in much. And he says to them, and he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. It doesn't change. Pastor Kibera is the one that likes to say to us, you, you, you become what you are becoming. You become what you are becoming. You don't just wake up in the morning and say, ah, I'm going to be a great husband. Me. Aki mapenzi wewe ni kikushika. Ndoa wewe. I'm saying I will be a great husband. Me. I start being a great husband today. Kwani great husbands are made of what? Kind words. Love in their hearts. Loving Jesus. You know? Mindfulness. Thoughtfulness. Sio yo. Si mstana atakuja kwa maisha yangu. Tukisaya sema I do. Then shua. Great husband. No, 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 no. You, you, you are looking for a job. You are looking for work. You are a student. Ati for work. You are looking for work. You are a student. Don't say, me, I will be a great employee. Hinta kwa nengia kwa office. Hinta kwa na clock in hivi. Eight. Na darasa ya eight, unafikanga sangapi? Wacha kutupanga buwana. Unajidanganya? You are not thinking about it. Unasama, me, wacha ilesi kunita kwa manager kwa ikampuni. Nita kwa naingia wa kwanza. Nengia. There is a place where I used to work before I came here. And the HR used to arrive the earliest. Na alikuwa na office yake ilikuwa first floor. Ilikuwa corner office. Uko kwa first floor, mali office yake ilikuwa, as he's swinging in his seat like this, he can see the gate as people are coming in. Akukule juu, patch like an eagle. Na angalia tu hivi. So he can see where people are coming in. Now, the staff had um, easy lanyards, kila mtu walikuwa wa badge. Zawzi likuwa za chain, Iyo, the, whatever the lanyards was a chain. For the interns, like us, zetu zilikuwa za green, luminous green. Zilikuwa zina shout from wherever you are. <laughs> so akia meketi hivi tu walikuwa anaona, uyo ni intern, uyo ni intern. So sometimes we call the gate, 
and say, ambia our interns watatu wa meingia hapo wakuja kwa HR size. <laughs> sasa size wa sisi tu meingia, sasa kwa hapo, oh, unaingia, <laughs> umeingia kazini. Na zingoja hile siku yenye watani confirm ya contract, sasa yondi yo siku yenye mtanza kuingia, uko seven, takuwa nifika uko seven. That day is never going to come. You become what you are becoming. What are you doing with what you have right now? The Bible says in the words of Jesus, he who is faithful in what is least is also faithful in much. You're saying the day I get, I start to earn a hundred thousand. I shall be tithing. Hey, they shall be receiving my tithe. Na sasa unapata elfu kumi ya utoi. Una thani kutoa elfu kumi kwa mshande uyeke hivi ni raizi. Kama unashindua kutoa thao. Thao, mtu wa mungu. Sama hey, unajua thao, unajua na lipa rent how much. The, the, ni sawa, lakini usianze kusumbua ukisema vinyo una. Iyo siku ikikuja. Adetu ukiomba unambia mungu, God I can't wait for the day you bless me. I shall be a faithful taita. Jesus is saying in his words, he who is faithful in what is least is also faithful. Can we talk about friendship for a minute? If you are those friends, you never call your friends, you never check up on them, you never... Una kwa natuwa, mi even diyo nakuanga. Lakini ile siku enye nitawa ipata PA, PA ata kuatua na nyeke kwa kalenda tu kila siku wana nikumbusha. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Sima sayi ni juna hustle, siku itawai kuja nye santa kwa nime relax. My money is working for me, nimefanya my investments. So sayi unta kwa na time una call. Una call nani? Jupia wawo sasa wana time yako. Atuna time. Ain't nobody, ladies and gentlemen, ain't nobody got time. He who is faithful with what is least is also faithful in much. Let me quote the words that we spoke yesterday in the cell congress. And we said, was it Martin Luther Jr. Saying that if you are a sweet street sweeper, you should be such a good, faithful, diligent street sweeper that when you stop sweeping that place, people will be saying they are once lived here a street sweeper. Used to sweep these floors until we could eat off of them. Sema wache ile sikuwe nye nitapata kwangu. Nitakuwe na panga, huko ni meka, huko ma flowers, nini? Zinitangwa nini? Zile cactus, watu wa waipi ndio na mkizi discuss jana, zinaitua je? Zinaitua? Succulents. Takuwa ni meka ma succulent CVs ne kwa hivi ni anza na hapo kwenye maalimko. Iyo nyasi mwagilia maji. Succulents utauwa bana. Unajua mtu mwenye anauwa succulents uwe ni mtu anaza. Those things survive in the desert and then now you come, they come to your house, you kill them. What kind of a person you are? And just... And... <laughs> All right. He who is faithful in what is least is also faithful in much. And he who is unjust in what is least is unjust also in much. Don't think that saizi unaiba, kama uko kazi unaiba kidogo kidogo, kwa sababu wati yuko na do kidogo aitoshi na mungu wana understand. Like, na, ata situ kwangi nyingi. Like, nkijazo tu hivi ni thao tu. Ata thao hii kampuni inapata ma millions. Thao tu hivi inani once a month. Iyo thao sasa ndo inanulianga credo. Lakini hile siku enye nitongeze wa mshande ifike do mzuri, sasa sita kuwa na nidio. If you're unjust with what is little, you shall be unjust with much. Those people that are in those offices that are corrupt to the bone, mtu anaenda anaembezo livi 110 million. One ten millions, unapeleka wapi? Wewe wizi jua. Mali wewe unapeleka hiyo thao, ndiyo ya unapeleka 110. So finally Jesus says, therefore if you have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon or with money, who will commit to your trust the true riches? The true riches Jesus is talking about here is... Uh, he's making a beautiful contrast. He's talking about the wealth of the kingdom. See, pesa, pesa, true riches. This unrighteous mammon, pesa is just a in means to yapa, in naishi yapa, in yapa too. The true riches is those things that Reinhard Bonnke used to say, the, the great evangelist of old, he used to say that the most important things in life are not things. Bwana sifiwe. 
The true riches are the things God has given to you. The love that you share with your brethren. That you can come together here in the ministry time and you hold a brother and you have a shoulder to cry on. Or you have somebody to hold hands and agree with. True riches. Fellowship of believers. Any mneza mkaingia kwa network inyu pale YP ama Ablaze ama Axis. Mneza mkaingia mketichini ama ladies group, men's group, whatever. Mwingia mketichini. Ushare tu inidi yako useme man I've had a horrible week. And guys are just encouraging you and telling you hey, it shall be well. True riches. Fellowship. True riches. Juko kwa dunia unenda kuambia nani hizo vitu? Hey brother, strong, strong, strong. Kauka bro. Kuna kwa ngaivo. Sin life, sauta do. Wa? So una decide to wacha tu nyama zange. True riches. So Jesus is asking, if you are not faithful with money, with those things, unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? You'll find that nobody cares. Nobody is, is, is willing to put these things in your care because you are showing the Lord. And you see, the giver of all things, we have already said it here many times before, is who? God is the giver, the source and the sustainer of all things. He is the true giver of all things. The Bible says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 2, that moreover it is required in stewards that a man must be found faithful. Full. That portion of scripture just says to us, there is a time that is coming and somebody is coming to look at the work. When he comes, you better be found faithful. Kuna, there is a time for finding. There is a finding time. Oh. You better be found faithful. So all of us, all of us in the house today, regardless of whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not, in fact, whether you feel like it or not, all of us here today, under the sound of my voice, myself included, all of us are stewards. Go to steward, Munzako, Kandako. Right. All of us are stewards. So the question, you cannot sit and say, hmm, 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 what you have. You see, somebody might say, hey, I'm going to have a teaching so easy, kabla I'm going to have a job. I'm going to have a job, and listen, it's not about your bank account. Hakuna mtu wapa hashiki pesa. Hamna yeyote hata watoto na waona hapa hamna. Napatia mtoto shiling kumi. I have a nephew, a small nephew. He's in what, grade 6 I think. Ni grade 6. Here junior, junior. Hii wae mambo ya CBC wae yako grade 6. Every time I give him money, Lewis, he doesn't spend it. He puts it in a potea. I don't know what it's called in English. Nakarimu. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> Every time I give my, my nephew money, he puts it in there. So one day I asked him, by the way, what do you do with all the money I give you? Because I felt like some, I was feeling like I need to, you know, just at, at a lesson in financial management. So I was just like, hey, kila wakati tukipata na hivi na mpatia ngadu, mpatia ka 20, ka finje, when I'm feeling generous, you know, at that time of the month. Mpatia ka so, not just once in a while, never goes beyond that. You don't want to spoil children with money. But... I was, I was feeling like I need to have a conversation with him, you know, just money talks. So I'm asking him, unafanya nini yo pesa? I'm going to save. I'm like, oh, nice, unataka kunua? The answer blew me. I, I was with my sister when we were being told that. I remember we looked at, my, at, at each other with my sister, we were like, what are we doing with our lives? Because he said he's saving for a vehicle, for a car. When he said he's saving for a car, I thought a toy car, okay. I'm sorry, I know you thought that too. But he meant a vehicle, Gary. Tulikuwa kwa gari, I was driving, nikimuliza hivyo. I said, I'm saving for a car. I'm like, oh, hey, like TRM, ama like, kafo unataka gani? Kwanza kuna Sarit Center, toy store, mali wanauzana magari. I'm like, zizi, zizi, nataka gari, na sevia gari. He was so offended that I'm thinking about. <laughs> like, you're the adult here, why are you thinking about toys? <laughs> and I thought to myself, wow. As I read this portion of scripture, I remembered that conversation I had with my nephew. And I thought, there is nobody that is not a steward. Of the things that you've been given, the children, the old people, don't think that day I become a manager with lots of money. That day. Una gari lako, ni sawa, lakini unajua kuendesha gari, na unapiangwa squad na my friend zako, unaendesha ngayo gari aje? Uru, mawe, pupu, ne, go, ne. Saizo wewe uki umebebo wana mwenyewe unaonanga vinya nakatanga hivi ya kiruka bumps ndio isiguze chini, anajua ya najua vinye chuma zinatoka. What kind of a steward are you? I want you to close your eyes for just a minute. And I want you to make the prayer for yourself. 
as you're making that prayer, just ask yourself, this past week alone, this past week, i wiki tu pekeake, i wiki pekeake, how have you used your worldly wealth? As you listen to those questions, answer those questions in prayer by asking the Lord to help you. How have you used your worldly wealth in this past week? What have you bought this past week? What have you saved this past week? What have you given away this past week? Just ask yourself, what, what, how have you stewarded your wealth, your worldly wealth? Because how, how does it look like if you want to know whether you are a faithful steward or not? It is by looking at those things. You ask yourself if people were to come and look at your bank account or to look at the money you have or the things that you have in your possession, what would they discover about me? Will they discover that I really, really like food and entertainment? Will they find evidence of consistent generosity in my life? Will people consider that I live within my means? Will they see a pattern of overspending? Do my spending patterns show that I am a faithful, steward, trustworthy disciple of Jesus? How are my friendships like in this past week? Who have I called? Who have I not called? What am I doing with where I am? How has my work been like? Have I had run-ins with my bosses? What am I doing with my life right now? Am I a faithful steward? Having thought about those things, I want you to make a prayer for yourself. Just make a prayer. You know what the answers have come back as? Just ask the Lord to help you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Master, we thank you so, so much for the sharing of your word today. We ask that, Lord, you're going to help us in this believer's practice. We want to be faithful stewards. We want to give. We want to use what we have now to build here in the earth, but to build the real things, things that will have eternal value, friendships, fellowship, the kingdom of God, to build values. And Lord, when all is said and done, that what we are doing with what we have here, that Lord Jesus, it will have a bearing on our eternity, that it will help us to cross on over into a glorious eternity with Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord God Almighty, that throughout the week you will continue to follow these things up and to perform them inside of us. Make us faithful stewards, that when the day of finding comes, you shall find us faithful. Help us, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.